This is Home Value Stories. I'm Jamie Owen. This is a podcast that is designed to educate you, the consumer, on things related to real estate and valuation. Thanks for joining me here today to talk about real estate. Did you know that you can sell your home for anything that you want to? Of course, the trick is finding a buyer that is willing and able to pay what you are asking. The question is, how probable is it that someone will pay what you are asking? There's a difference between what is possible and what is probable. Let's talk about it. Let me tell you a love story. Once upon a time, there were some delightful homeowners and they fell in love with their home. It was the perfect home for them. Over the years, they remodeled the kitchens. They remodeled the bathrooms. They cared for their home as if it was a cherished member of their own family. They watched their children take their first steps on their beautiful hardwood floors and plush carpeting. They loved the way the sunlight beamed into the living room in the afternoon. They loved the privacy they enjoyed in the backyard that was wooded. However, the time came when they wanted to sell their home. It was a time for the homeowners to consciously uncouple from their current home and move on. Clearly, anyone looking for a home would love their home and would value it as much as they did. And while there were other comparable homes that had recently sold in the neighborhood, the homeowners felt that no other homes were quite as good as theirs. If they were able to find someone willing to pay what they were asking, clearly it would appraise for that price. After all, market value is what a member of the market is willing to pay for a home, right? It is true that a homeowner can sell their home for any amount that they want to. If homes comparable to the homeowners are selling for $200,000, but they find someone willing to pay $300,000, well, then obviously it's possible to sell their home for that amount. But just because something's possible doesn't mean that it is probable. If you think about it, there are many things that are possible but not probable. 20 years ago, it was not possible to create a podcast in which people could listen to a show like this on their cell phone or other electronic device. But now we can listen to thousands of songs or even view shows on our cell phones. We can make video calls and send emails all from our phone. Today's cell phones are far more powerful than the computer used on the original space shuttle. However, what is possible and what is probable are two different things. While the materials used to make a cell phone have always been in existence, it has not always been probable that this kind of technology would be developed. Getting back to buying a home. While it may be possible to sell a home for any amount of money, the bigger question is, how will the buyer pay for it? Most people don't pay cash for homes. They usually finance them. Would any lender be willing to lend more than the market value of a home? And by the way, what constitutes market value anyway? Because most appraisals are completed for mortgage lending purposes using market value. The appraiser will provide an opinion of the market value of the home. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute, but one aspect of market value is that it is the most probable sales price that the home will sell for in an open market under certain conditions. Let's talk about how probability works. Can you think of some things that are probable? For instance, When you're running late for an appointment, it's usually then that you end up driving behind somebody that's going 10 miles 
under the speed limit, right? What is the probability that when I'm eating a chocolate chip cookie and driving, that a small piece of chocolate will fall between my pant legs, melt, causing me to look as though I soiled my pants in a way different than the chocolate melting? I can tell you from experience that the chances are very good. And that's a little too much information, I realize. But it re might remind you of the law called Murphy's Law. That law states that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Now, that's not really always true, but sometimes it does feel that way, and it does kind of work with probability in some respects. Where did Murphy's Law come from anyway? According to the Murphy's Law website, and I'm not making that up, we have to go back in time to 1949 to the Edwards Air Force Base. There, Captain Edward A. Murphy, who was an engineer, was working on a special project designed to test how much sudden deceleration a person can withstand in a crash. According to that website, one day, after finding that a transducer was wired wrong, he cursed the technician responsible and said, if there is any way to do it wrong, he'll find it. Little did Captain Murphy know that he had just uttered the principle for the law named after him. The success of his research was attributed to this law. An Air Force doctor named John Paul Stapp had taken a ride on a sled on the deceleration track all the way to a stop, pulling 40 Gs. He gave credit to Murphy's Law when he stated that their good safety record on the project was due to a firm belief in Murphy's Law and in the necessity to try to circumvent it. According to that article, aerospace manufacturers picked it up and used the name of that law in their ads in the following months. Hence, Murphy's Law became a household saying. Getting back to real estate, clearly Murphy's Law does not always stand true when it comes to real estate transactions, or anything else for that matter. However, there are economic principles that do come into play in real estate valuation when it comes to trying to determine what the most probable sales price of a home is. For instance, there are other laws, like the laws of supply and demand, that we have to analyze. If there is competition, well-informed buyers are not going to pay more for one home than they would for a very comparable home that's being offered for less. Why would they? Further, when there are more comparable homes on the market, that means that there's more competition, and that usually impacts what people are willing to spend on a comparable home. Conversely, when, when there's less competition, people may be more likely to spend more for a home. Another thing to consider is that in trying to determine what is the most probable sales price of a home, an appraiser is going to use more than one sale. One sale that sells for much more than other comparable sales are selling for is not typically considered a good market indicator. We usually call those outliers if they're selling for much more or for much less than what other comparable sales are selling for. Typically, the most probable sales price of a home relates to the mode. Now, you might be wondering what that term means. So we have to put on our basic statistics hat for a moment. And perhaps you remember this from high school. What does the term mode mean? In statistics, the term mode describes the most frequently occurring number in a set of numbers. For instance, Say you had four very comparable homes that just sold, and they were all basically equal in every possible way. Now, three of those homes sold for $200,000, and one of them sold for $250,000. What is the mode? The mode in that range of sales is $200,000, because that's the price that sold most frequently. Therefore, 
the most probable sales price of a home comparable to these homes would be $200,000. Now, some feel that if the appraiser uses that one higher sale, that this will at least raise the average adjusted price of the home in the appraiser's analysis, providing a, a little bit higher opinion of value. But it doesn't work that way because as appraisers, we don't simply average the adjusted sales prices of the comparable sales. We, we never do that. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Now, sometimes we can use a weighted average, but a weighted average is completely different than just averaging the, uh, the adjusted sales prices. So that's something to keep in mind. Probability has been defined in some dictionaries as a strong likelihood or chance of something happening. In our example, what is the likelihood that an educated buyer is going to pay $50,000 more for a home than they could purchase another comparable home for in the same neighborhood? In Fannie Mae's definition of the market value of a home used for mortgage-related transactions, it states that the market value is the most probable sales price which a property should bring in a competitive and open market under all conditions requisite to be a fair sale, the buyer and seller, each acting prudently, knowledgeably, and assuming the price is not affected by undue stimulus. Now, if a person was willing to pay more for a home than other comparable homes were being offered for, usually there's a reason for that there may be some undue stimulus at play. Not necessarily bad, but, but there's something at play. There's a reason why this buyer is willing to pay more for this home than other buyers. Perhaps the home's located next to a family member. And so it's worth paying a little bit more for this home, for this one buyer. Or perhaps the buyer grew up in this home and they have such fond childhood memories that they just want to live there again. It could be anything, but it wouldn't be typical of other buyers in the marketplace. Now, Fannie Mae's definition goes on to state that the buyer and seller are typically motivated and that both parties are well-informed or well-advised and each acting in what he or she considers his or her own best interest. Now, is a buyer who is willing to pay a lot more than other comparable properties are being sold for, really acting in their own best interest? It's something to consider. Speaking of acting in one's own best interest, what if someone buys a home and they qualify for an appraisal waiver? Now, that's happening more and more, and it may happen to you. Now, perhaps instead of getting an appraisal on the property that a person is buying, they just purchase it without an appraisal. But what if they overpaid for the home and didn't know it because they didn't have an appraisal completed? They relied on an automation, an automated valuation model, which are notoriously inaccurate. And this does happen. Was the buyer well-informed? Were they well-advised? Would purchasing a home without being educated on the market value first be acting in their own best interest? If the answer to any of those questions is no, then their willingness to pay more than other generally comparable homes are selling for might not be in line with the definition of market value. People's shopping habits today are a good example of how most people will act in their own best interest. For example, say you see a computer that you would like to buy at a department store. And then you go online or you go onto Amazon or some other online shopping program and you find that you can get the same computer for 25% less. What would you do? What would most people do? I think that most people would buy the computer online and save 25%. Now, if that's true with a computer, how much more so with one of the largest investments a person will make in their life, namely their home?
If you would like to educate yourself on what the market value of a home is before you buy it, where can you find a qualified real estate appraiser that can help you in your area? Go to findmyappraiser.com. It's a trusted nationwide network of real estate appraisers that can help you. You can run a search for appraisers in your area using this excellent resource. Not only are they a sponsor of this show, but I'm also a member of this awesome network of appraisers. So if you're looking for an excellent appraiser in your area, go to findmyappraiser.com. They have the best appraisers. See for yourself. Home Value Stories is also sponsored by ConsumerHomeValue.com, your go-to resource for trusted consumer information about all things real estate. Are you buying, selling, moving, considering remodeling, or more? Go to ConsumerHomeValue.com for reliable answers to your real estate questions. When appraising a property, sometimes a homeowner or real estate agent will provide me with sales that are outliers, like we discussed before. They are sales that seem comparable, but they sold for much more or much less than other comparable homes in the neighborhood. And I totally understand why. They may be more focused on what is possible than what is most probable. Of course, this is because they're not a disinterested party, whereas the appraiser has to be a disinterested third party. For instance, in a divorce, one party might want the appraisal to come in high, and the opposing party may want it to come in low. When a person wants to lower their taxes, they want the appraisal to come in low. When they're selling their home, they want the appraisal to come in high. A good appraiser will estimate the market value as a disinterested party who is not influenced by the client's desire, or desired value or any other agenda. And for that reason, sometimes the appraised value does not match up with the anticipated value of the client or intended user. Now, you might be wondering, though, is there ever a time when an outlier might really reflect the market value of a property? And the answer is yes. For instance, a property might have a very unique amenity or a a unique location or view that might demand the upper end of the sales price range. So as an appraiser, we have to be able to prove this and understand what's going on in the market. But yes, sometimes an outlier may be reflective of the market value of a home. Or a property may be in poor condition. In this case, the most probable sales price may be at the low end of the range because of work needed to the property. But whatever the case, the comparable sales must still meet the definition of market value in order to be reliable indicators of market value. Here's the point of this episode. Yes, you can sell your home for any price that you can get someone to agree to pay for it. However, that price may not reflect market value. The price may be possible, but it may not be probable. If you're fortunate enough to find someone who is willing and able to pay what you're asking, even if it's higher than market value, that is fantastic and congratulations. But usually that's not the case. By the way, many times the purchase price is reflective of the market value. Murphy's Law doesn't always apply. However, if the price that you're asking does not reflect the market value, does that mean that the appraisal killed the deal? No. It just means that the buyer will need to find a different way to pay for the property beyond financing it. If the buyer does not have the ability to pay the price being asked, either through financing or by paying cash, that's not the appraiser's fault. 
So hopefully that's given you some food for thought when it comes to what market value really means. Well, that's my take on this story. Perhaps you have a different one, and that's cool too. Either way, I'm glad you took the journey with me here today. Let's get together again in two weeks and talk more about real estate. If you're looking for an appraiser in your area, go to findmyappraiser.com. If you're looking for an energetic and upbeat appraiser in Northeast Ohio, you can find my contact information at the Cleveland Appraisal Blog. Have a great two weeks.